Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video we'll take a look at the Hard Rock 50, which is a 50 watt HF amplifier covering from 160 meters right up to the 6 meter handband. Now this is manufactured by Hobby PCB. Now this amplifier is rated at between 40 to 50 watts max output up to 10 meters and then 30 to 35 watts on the 6 meter band. Now what's unique about this amplifier is that it will arrive in kit form, meaning there will be some building required before you can use it. Now I do have an upcoming video which I'll be showing you exactly how I built this amplifier and if you're a YouTube member or Patreon then you'll get to see that video early. Now in this video we'll concentrate on features, functions and then test it on air using a Hermes Light 2 SDR transceiver. As we can see, the HR50 is built extremely solid, with the top half consisting of the heatsink. Now, the front panel has three push buttons a status LED, power switch, and an LCD, which shows various information such as SWR, power output, and the currently selected band. Now, we'll go through all of the menu and the buttons in a moment. Now, the rear panel consists of two SO239 sockets one for RF in and one for RF out. We also have the DC input, a USB socket for updating firmware, a PTT control and a DB9 socket which can be used for radio interfacing. Now later in the video I'll be testing this with the Hermes Light 2. My Hermes Light 2 has the IO board installed with the HR50 firmware. This means using a cable we can connect the Hermes Light 2 to the HR50 via a DB9 connector. This will allow your SDR software via the Hermes Light 2 to change the band of the amplifier as you change bands on the software. Now the HR50 does support RF Sense and the hang time can be altered if you want to use this amp manually without any radio interfacing. Powering on the Hard Rock 50 shows the current firmware installed along with the ATU firmware if you have that optional ATU installed. And once the splash screen disappears, the current key method is shown, and this can be changed by pressing the MO button. This cycles through PTT, Core, QRP and OFF. The band select buttons change the filters within the amplifier to the corresponding band, cycling 160 meters through to 6 meters. Now if you hold in that key mode button for a second or so, it enters the menu. Now here we can change things like the accessory port board rate or the USB board rate. Now option 4 allows you to change the accessory port radio interface mode and this is from the Elecraft KX2 or 3, the Yaesu FT817818 or the Zygu amplifier, icon modes and then other which is what I'm actually going to select for use with the Hermes Light 2 I.O. board. The temperature that shows on the main screen is that of the heatsink, and you can either change that between Celsius or Fahrenheit. You can also adjust the power meter, so if you have a calibrated power meter and need to adjust the inbuilt meter, then you can use this setting. Now, if you're using a core method, in other words, using RF sensing, for PTT, then you can adjust the core hang time, which would most likely be used when you're using like SSB. Now, if you have the ATU installed, then you also see some options available for the ATU. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I have a full build video coming out of this actual amplifier soon, but here's a sneak peek of what it looks like inside. Here you can also see the optional ATU installed on the lower half of the casing, which is actually at the top of the screen right now. Now with regards to actual power output, I performed some tests using narrow FM and transmitting through into a dummy load. I observed these power levels using a digital power meter. Now you can see in this video clip which band I'm transmitting on by looking at the selected band on the amps screen. Now when I first started doing this test, I thought there was something wrong with my power meter as all of the measurements were way above 50 watts, apart from 20 meters, which was showing around 50. However, I'd done a little research on the internet to see if I could find other users' power measurements for each band, and lo and behold, they all reported roughly what I was seeing here, 
so it appears the HR50 actually runs a little higher than specification. Yeah, have a great weekend. Take care. All the best. QFZ. Uh, M0DQW. Full record of loads of you. Try again, QFZ. Yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Hotel Quebec Whiskey. Good afternoon. The name's Andy Mark. Over. Uh, yes, yeah, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey DQW. Good afternoon, Andy. Hope you're well. Name's Matt. Uh, well, it is now. I would put the call sign incorrectly. Good afternoon, Matt. Apologies. I put the wrong call in. How are you doing, mate? Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just uh, recording a video and uh, uh, just testing a new amplifier and uh, thought I'd uh, give you the pleasure. Uh, but uh, you're sounding great and uh, yeah, very good, uh, very good audio and uh, very good signal coming down here, down south. I wonder, you got any snow up there, Andy? Yeah, well, first of all, you signal and report yourself, mate. You're 10 over. Uh, beautiful audio, mate, as usual. You've got the voice for radio, mate. Well, I think radios were invented for your voice, Matt. Uh, I think I've told you that many times. Yes, we have. And uh, it's been bitterly cold this morning. It was minus five when I crawled out of my sack uh, this this morning and got to the clubhouse around ooh, about 10 o'clock and it was still minus three, minus four. But it's starting to thaw out a little bit, Matt, Matt over. Yeah, Roger. Okay, yeah, sorry, I, I forgot to give you your report. Yeah, you're about, uh, you're five and nine, but uh, uh, peaking five, nine plus 20. So lovely, strong signal down here today. Uh, yeah, it's about minus one here, uh, completely covered in fog. Can't really see at the end of the garden, uh, but we haven't got any snow yet either. So, well, well we haven't got any snow. Um, I, I like snow. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of hoping that it does snow. But anyway, only running 50 watts today from a uh, Hard Rock 50 uh, amplifier, and uh, using um, I'm using a Hermes Light 2 SDR radio uh, is is uh, is what I'm using. But uh, nice to speak to you, Andy. It has been a very long time. I do listen quite a lot um, while I'm working away here. So um, I do hear sometimes, uh, in fact, I think it's been a few weeks since I've heard you um, doing your net uh, uh, in the evenings on 40, but I guess that's because conditions haven't really been that good on 40. But anyway, great to uh, great to speak to you this afternoon and, and uh, hope you get lots of contacts, Andy. Yeah, many thanks, Matt. Yeah, the uh, live streaming on an evening on 40 has uh, took a back seat now um, because of the conditions, the propagation is not there. Uh, winter, I'm afraid, and uh, obviously work requirements and everything, they come first. Thanks for calling in, Matt. Been a pleasure, mate. Always good to get you in the log. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Take care. And uh, what do they say? Good DX and enjoy your radio oh, and all that malarkey. Sem 3s mate. M0DQW clear. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Take care. QRZ, GB0MC, listening. Well, there we go, guys. That was great to get a contact with Andy running the special event station GB0MC and go and check them out on QRZ to see what their special event call sign is all about. Now, the Hard Rock 50 sells for around $300 without the ATU board. So if you're interested in a robust amplifier for HF up to 6 meters, then I would most certainly recommend this amplifier. Now, as mentioned before, watch out for an upcoming video where I go through step by step on how to build this amplifier from all of the supplied parts that comes in the kit. Until the next video, guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Keep warm if it's winter time where you are. And I'll see you guys in the next video.